Hi guys, how are you guys doing? Um, I prepared an extra section to help you uh, move forward with this course and this section is all about the most popular fields and field options in Django models. So I already prepared the solution for this and the code is already written. Um, I even prepared a cheat sheet for you so it's attached to this course and this is how it looks like. So we have some uh, informations regarding the field options, field types and the relationship field types. Also we provided an external field and this is how to install it. And also uh, on the next page we will find a link to the documentation for this field. And this is the code that is um, in the models py file and this is the view in the admin so if we just make it bigger it it looks actually okay and on the next page we have um, remarks so this is what's been created and i just want to make a short overview so we are going to jump in the django admin as well as visual studio code and we will uh, walk through what actually happens in this cheat sheet in this piece of code so let's do this now So let's begin from the top. Over here we have a field named boolean and it's a type of boolean field. And if we go to the admin, we can see that the field, uh, by the field appears, this is a boolean field and it's already checked. So this is why. Default is equals to true. If it would be to false, then this would be uh, unchecked. So it would appear like this. And we also provided a verbose name, so this is a boolean field, and this is why we see this. If there would be no verbose name, we would see boolean. So this is related to the boolean. The next um, field is char, and this is a model's char field, and we also provided a verbose name, so instead of char, we see a new name, just like this but we also provided a um, max length, so, so this is mandatory, we need to provide in every char field max length. Then we set this field to be unique and we added some help text. So if we go over here, we have this um, help text uh, which appears beneath the input. So the next field type on our list is the date field, so we named this field date and if we go to the admin we see that it's set for the today's date and this is because we provided a default value of time zone now and time zone is imported from Django utils. Then we have a decimal field and we described it as max digits it is equal to 5 and decimal places is equal to 2. So instead of creating an, a new object I can go back and I can access the one that I already created and here if I would write down a couple more zeros and I would try to save it I will get an error so um, please correct the errors below so there are no errors uh -huh, okay here are the errors so I have to select something okay and let's try this out again Ensure that there are no more than five digits in total. So this is um, how it works. We are allowed to have uh, no more than five digits in total and we see that here are the two decimal places. Okay, so this is the decimal, then we have an email field and this is a char field but with a special email validator. Then we have file and image uh, field, so file field, image field, they both require upload to and they are set as blank equals to true so um, yeah they are optional because of this if we would delete it they would be bolded both and they would be they would become required so then we have an integer field and positive small integer field actually this is positive integer field not so the name is a little bit wrong because um, yeah, let's correct this positive 
integer field and then we can write down at the bottom positive uh, small integer field it will look the same but there's a, a major difference we can look it up in our cheat sheet so I'm just going to write down positive small integer field and I'm going to save it we still need to do some um, things related to the migrations but for now let's just look at the cheat sheet and over here we have it explained so integer field is for values from this to this then positive integer field is from values from 0 to this and then we have positive small integer field is for values from 0 to this. So actually, maybe I can comment this out. You know, uh, you will know that uh, there is such an option. Uh, it's also described in the cheat sheet. But for now, let's move forward. Then we have a slug. And a slug is something that you probably know. But in case if you don't, um, a slug is basically if coming up from a text and if we have a text like you are cool, the slug would be you are cool. And in order to slugify something, we have a special uh, filter uh, slugify that we import from Django template default filters. And then we override the save method. So here we have self slug is equal to slugify. And then we are taking this text field and we are limiting it to 30 and based off this we are creating a slug. So this is um, how it looks like and over here our slug is discovering field types so it's exactly like this. Okay. And then we have a URL field, so this is a char field with a special URL validator so we can also look it up and this is it and then we have a UED field field for storing universally unique in, an identifier so um, this is this identifier and actually if we look at the two options because we have UED1 UED2 and here we have for both a default value of UED um, but here we have something like primary key is equal to true and editable is equals to false. So whenever you set editable is equal to false, then this field is becoming invisible for the admin or any model form. So if we go back, we can see UED1, but there is no UED2. And if we set the primary key to true, this will this field will become the primary key of this model so this is quite important and then we have updated and created so this is something that uh, you probably already know if not um, auto now by setting auto now we are telling django to save this uh, updated field every time the model is updated so every time we make a change we save the model the updated field gets simply updated but for the created we set auto now add is equal to true and this date will um, appear only once it will be saved only once when creating the particular object so um, what's going on over here we have date and time models date time field blank so both auto now is equals to false and auto now add is equals to false so what's going on over here let's go to the admin and check this out so i don't see any um, updated and created but i see date and time and this is related to the fact that whenever we set auto now is equal to true or auto now add is equal to true we are basically saying that this these fields with auto now equals to true or auto now add equals to true are also editable false so that's why they are invisible in the admin but here we don't have uh, any auto now is equal to true or auto now add is equal to true 
and so the, our edit table is equal to true and that's why we can see this in the admin. Then we have a choice field and over here at the top we defined the choices. So we have on the left the uh, value that is being stored in the database and then on the right we have the uh, human readable um, name and we can also go to the admin and look at these choices so we have two choices and we have number one and number two okay so this is how it works and we will be using uh, this in in our project but with the use of a list comprehension so we won't be use uh, we won't be um, typing the choices manually we will use something called um, list comprehension and this will be done for the hours so this is something that you will explore a little bit later uh, during this course okay then we have a phone number and this is something that you need to install in order to use it so this is uh, coming from a third party uh, solution and I provided a link in the cheat sheet so it's on the next page I think um, yes, it's over here, so you can go ahead and uh, install it, but also it's very simple to install, so you actually um, can just simply follow the things that are in the cheat sheet. And let me just show you. Here you need to write down pip install Django phone number field, pip install phone numbers, and then add phone number fields to the installed apps in the settings py and uh, you need to do an import so you need to do this so you're importing the phone number field and then you can use it over here okay and then we have a new field and this is models foreign key that takes in the model and the model is the user on delete is equals to models cascade so basically we can imagine a situation that we have uh, written a post on a, on Facebook and then we have uh, comments to it and whenever we delete the post the comments will get deleted as well so this is basically on an example what is it, it is doing and then we have null is equal to true and this is saying that we are allowing to store null values in the database so if you remember of each field is like a column in the database and we have some objects created let's imagine that we have many objects created and we are adding a column and if we don't set null is equals to true we would need to provide some default value for these columns um, for, for these objects that uh, don't have any value of the new column. So to make this maybe um, uh, more understandable, let's add another field and I'll just call it new field 2 and this would be a models char field and the max length will be equals to 10 and I'm going to save it and go to the terminal going to do the migrations and yes I did okay and here we have please select a fix so we need to provide a default value or we can set over here in the console or we can set a default in models py okay so i'm not going to do it instead i'm going to write down null is equal to true now i'm going to save it and go back python manage py make migrations and again i'm going to confirm that i renamed the name and it's done so I can create those tables and Python manage py run server okay so now let's check this out 
and there it is so it is working and one thing that is worth mentioning that okay uh, we set the new equals to true for the existing objects in the database but now if we want to save it it becomes mandatory so if we would like to have it as an optional field we would have to write down blank is equals to true and now if we save it we go back and let's take care of the migrations Okay. And now it's not in a bold font, it is optional, so I can simply save it and it's okay. Of course, there is more on options and field types in the documentation, but in my opinion, if you learn about these ones mentioned over here, this will get you going with pretty much advanced uh, applications. So thank you for this one and we'll see each other in the next video.